Djibouti is a small country in the Horn of Africa with a population of 860,000. At the Independence Day, we had only one high school in Djibouti, one street and two doctors. Djibouti is still poor, no important natural resource. The main resource of Djibouti remain the geostrategical location of the country, bridging Africa to Asia. You've got the Red Sea, you've got a port that's right in the middle of north and south, as well as access to some of the fastest growing countries in sub-Saharan Africa. So this is a country with tremendous potential. Djibouti imagines in 2035 that there will be a just, a peaceful society, that it will be developed, that they will have good governance, economic growth. On appelle Djibouti la terre d'échange et de rencontre. Djibouti, nous voudrons la situer, par exemple, dans les 20 ans à venir, là où aujourd'hui est Singapour ou Dubaï. Nous pouvons y arriver si nous mettons toutes nos énergies ensemble. Getting from here to there is going to be difficult when you've got an economy that is having trouble getting off the ground. They need to get over that hump where you turn yourself from a natural resource-based economy into a dynamic manufacturing and service center. Le renforcement de nos acquis et la diversification de notre économie sont ainsi à la base des actions du gouvernement pour développer notre pays. Sur ces bases, il est donc important maintenant que soient engagés des projets pour diversifier notre économie dans des secteurs encore sous-exploités afin de favoriser l'emploi. Les cinq premiers secteurs retenus sont le transport, la logistique, les télécommunications, le tourisme, la pêche, l'aquaculture et l'industrie légère. Le forum qui s'ouvre aujourd'hui facilitera le recensement des voies et moyens qui permettront de promouvoir le secteur privé dans le développement de ces secteurs. Je souhaite un plein succès aux travaux du Forum sur les échanges d'expériences avec les pays amis, symbole d'une coopération sud-sud. We started with identifying countries that had similar characteristics to Djibouti. We invited Cap Vert, Mauritius and Dubai to come and present from the private sector, from the public sector perspective, what they had done and what had helped them in their development. Those countries have the same characteristic in terms of economical, macroeconomics, or the historical background, the level of development. And we wanted to know about what were the, the error made, what kind of leadership they had what kind of interaction they created between the private sector to the public, as well as civil society to the government. Mauritius, over the last number of years, has made significant economic progress. It is a small country, a small island, and over the years it has diversified into a number of new areas, such as manufacturing, textile, services, tourism. To my mind, the involvement of Mauritius in the conference has focused on how we change the economy and to what extent Djibouti can use some of the Mauritian experience to engage in that dialogue, to meet that vision of 2035. We are here to share the experience of Cape Verde in drafts, a clear vision for the tourism sector. Some of the challenge that Cape Verde faced is the challenge that uh, Djibouti is uh, facing now or will face in the coming years. The first is to define which kind of tourism Djibouti wants. Because if you don't answer clearly this question, you will shut in different directions, wasting resources. You cannot uh, develop the competitivity to attract everybody. Djibouti has more potential actually right now than the way in 1971 when the, when the uh, action started in Dubai. Dubai is not a very cheap city for investment. However, it provides certainty to investors, guarantees. Djibouti can benefit 
from Dubai's experience, from other countries' experience. But the most important thing is that you are not going to replicate things. That's not good enough. What you need is a vision at the top level. The tour yesterday was really valuable because for almost everybody coming from the outside, this is their first visit to Djibouti. They toured the area where they're going to build a second port and they met with the governor of that district. It was a very good experience in terms of the transport. This gave us a clear idea of the challenge the country has to implement an internal transport system to facilitate the circulation of tourists across all this country. When we visited Tejura, it was clear that they were starting at the very low end to build the port and to build the other facilities to be able to optimize its geography. You can read all you want, but if you actually see it and you meet some of the people, you begin to see some of the dynamism that is really going to drive this economy firsthand. The key messages that came out from the presentations of the three countries, but also from the four roundtables that we had organized, were the need for good governance, fiscal governance, judicial governance, every aspect of governance and transparency, enabling the environment for the private sector development that would create jobs and thus help uh, reduce poverty, and making sure that this economic growth is really inclusive, is shared, it takes account of the most vulnerable in the population. This conference has already highlighted or surfaced these difficult policy reforms that Djibouti has to undertake. One of the most critical ones is going to be telecommunications. The telecommunications infrastructure is quite good, but there's only one telecommunications company. So there's no competition, and telecommunications costs are very high. A key issue that kept coming up was that, well, Djibouti is very small. We had presentations from Cap Verde and from Mauritius, who are also small. And they showed the Djiboutians that size does not matter. They have developed tourism, they have developed infrastructures. They always talk about the main impediment to private sector development in Djibouti being the high cost of energy. Well, we saw that Cap Verde has done that with probably the highest rate of energy. Dubai has high costs, they've done it. Mauritius has high energy costs and they've done it. So these constraints should not be the impediment and they should not stop the development of the country. The idea of the end of the two and a half days here is to come up with concrete actions that the government will undertake to promote the consensus view to accelerate progress in these areas. We started with different points of view. At the end, there was a very strong convergence uh, towards the same recommendations, and so we thought that was an excellent outcome of this exchange. It's not a unidirectional event, it was a share of uh, information and knowledge. I've learned a lot, not uh, only about this country itself, but even uh, about uh, how people here understand the challenge and how they are thinking to solve them. What I learned is everything is possible. It all depends on how much committed we are in the transformation of our own country. We do believe everyone will go back home after the forum and feel, yes, we are capable in transforming our country.